The promise of DeFi was to create permissionless smart contracts distributed across a decentralized network. Today, the vast majority of protocols have access control privileges and owner-only functions. In this tutorial, we're going to look at how to deploy a contract from within Solidity so that the contract owner is a smart contract itself. My name is James Buccini, and on this channel, I create content about blockchain development and decentralized finance. Interested in learning more, then subscribe to the channel and hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Okay, so I'm in remix.ethereum.org here. I'm going to go ahead and create a new file. What we're going to do is put both contracts into a single Solidity file. So I'm going to call this deploy.sol. Let's close this up a little bit so we've got a bit more space. Let's paste in a fairly standard ERC20 token. So we can see here that we've got the Open Zeppelin library for the ERC20 token. We're going to call it my token and we're going to pass in the name my token and the ticker symbol my token. And then we're going to basically mint a, a massive amount of these tokens which are going to go to the person that deploys this contract. Now, if we deploy this from Remix or Hard Hat or Foundry, then we're going to be the deployer of this contract. So we're going to own all them tokens. And we don't want that. What we want to do is create a second contract, which is going to be the receiver of the tokens. So the second contract actually owns them tokens and it can do something with them and distribute them in a way that is specified by code rather than the developers sending them out. So let's go ahead and create a new contract. And we're going to have the address uh, public my token. Now we're going to have a constructor argument. Do my token equals address new my token. Then we're going to simply have a new function, which is function distribute uh, external. Actually, let's put a new address mapping up here. So we can do mapping address to unit 256 equal sign. We'll just be public, we'll call it claimed. We're going to do require claimed message dot sender. Is greater than zero. Sorry, it is equal to zero. Then we're going to change this so that then we're going to set that for to say 100 and then we're going to give out 100 tokens. So we're going to do uh, my token. So we create an instance of it. Transfer message dot sender 100. What this is doing is it means that everyone with an address can claim 100 of the tokens. This isn't a massive amount. Obviously, it's not civil resistance. So you want to use this in production. But it's just an example of how you can use a deployer contract so that rather than distributing the tokens or giving the tokens to the developers, you're actually giving it to the code and the code controls what they do with the tokens. You're basically creating a parent contract for this token, which is responsible for the distribution of it. All right, now let's go ahead and deploy this or compile it first and see how many bugs we have. Surprisingly none, and then let's deploy this. We're going to deploy it to a local remix. Change this to the deployer contract, and let's go ahead and deploy that. So we've got a deployer contract here. If we go to my token, this will give us the address of the token that we've just deployed, and we can create an instance of this in remix as well. If we change this to my token and click that address, we copy and pasted that in from here. And now we should have two contracts to interact with my token and deployer. Now, no one at this point is going to have any tokens. If we look at the address that we use to deploy that, and we check the balance of function, which is an internal ERC20 function, you see we've got zero tokens. 
But if we go to the deployer account and click distribute, and we should check that this is now saying 100. And if we check balance of here, we've now got 100 tokens. And anyone with an Ethereum address can do that and interact with his contract to claim 100 tokens. If we try it again, the transaction fails with the error message already claimed. So that's a simple example of what you can do with these parent-child smart contract patterns. You can take this a step further and create what's called factory contracts, which deploy contracts on the fly dynamically. So if the user wants to set up a liquidity pool or some other kind of functionality, they can actually interact with your contract to deploy a contract of their own from within your contract. There's other things you can do. Recently, I was working on a project where you had different tokens and one token, you had to stake it to get another token and that uh, rewards token was owned and deployed by the parent token and then that parent token was actually owned by a third uh, smart contract which was responsible for the distribution of it. The whole idea here is something I believe in strongly and that's to take the human factor out of the smart contracts. The smart contracts should be as permissionless as possible. I know sometimes that's not always 100% uh, possible but where as developers it's our responsibility to strive for that if we're not kind of looking to create permissionless contracts, then we should just be using a database. There's no reason to go through the hassles of using a blockchain. You know, they're slow, they're expensive. And that the whole point of it is to create these permissionless contracts on decentralized networks, and that's very valuable. But having the ownership of a contract be another piece of code rather than a person or a developer, it takes out some of that human factor, which might be susceptible to things like social engineering attacks. It makes it more secure over the long term, in my opinion, some people disagree with that. But for me, I think it's very, very important that we kind of move away from kind of permission contracts towards as much as possible, creating permissionless functions where everybody is treated equally. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you're interested in learning more about blockchain development and decentralized finance, then subscribe to the channel, hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm and the full code for this and some more information is on the blog post link to the description. Thank you for watching.